everyone and welcome to The Deep Dive. In today's episode, we're going to give you some tips on how to become a rescue diver. But before we talk about that, we again just wanted to say a massive thank you to the response to last week's episode where we spoke about split fins. It did better than the deco stop and also our Friday feature for a bit, which is just awesome, so thank you for that. Okay, so let's talk about some tips on how to become a rescue diver. Okay, so the very first tip is that you really do need to love yourself. So yes, this does seem a little bit weird, but basically in a nutshell, if you can't look after yourself, how are you gonna be looking after someone else in the water? Being a rescue diver is all about being calm and aware of your surroundings. Very much like a standard first aid course, the first step that you need to think about is yourself. If you ever need to get into the water to rescue someone, you will need to understand your own limitations. Sadly, your life isn't a Hollywood movie. If you jump in the water without assessing first, you could land yourself in hot water and you'll be the one that needs to be saved. So think about yourself first, because at the end of the day, the most important person you need to focus on keeping alive is you so the next tip we uh, we I basically call the uh, the, the bubble so um, so I talk about this uh, quite a lot especially in last week's deco stop podcast and um, basically the best way to help in an incident is to try and prevent it in the first place uh, of course when you very first learn to dive your kind of bubble of awareness is pretty small you only really think about yourself but the more that you dive the more you'll start noticing other things and then your bubble of sort of experience kind of expands and through that that kind of knowledge you know you pick up by uh, by actually diving more uh, as Rupert moves around on the stones um, you basically start seeing small little signs that could actually lead to a bigger problem and then you'll actually be able to nip them in the bud before an accident or an incident occurs because you've seen those little cues okay so you need to be prepared to become the responsible person of your dive group Tapping into the bubble tip, you really need to start looking at other people's equipment and what might cause a problem further down the line. You will need confidence to step in at any given point of a dive and take charge. This could be just as simple as asking a fellow diver to check if a bolt needs tightening or to call a whole dive off because of the weather or some other scenario. Once you've conquered your confidence, responsibility will become second nature to you. Okay, so the next tip is kind of a biggie. You, uh, you actually have to try to control your own stress. So if you start freaking out about an incident, it will no doubt just trigger someone else. And then the next thing you know, your entire boat is just in a panic. Now, yes, you do need to uh, kind of joke around with your friends and kind of make fun of things uh, and kind of make everyone feel at ease, but when something actually hits a fan, you are, you are the one that actually needs to be calm and chill and just deal with the problem at hand. And if you're stressed out or appear to be stressed out, then that just can't happen. As a rescue diver, you need to be proficient enough not to panic in the water if someone knocks a mask off or pulls out a reg. So yeah, woosa, as Sean would say. Woosa. <laughs> <laughs> Becoming a rescue diver also means you need to be the most prepared diver in your whole team. Remember when you were doing your initial course and your instructor had every bit of equipment needed or a way around something? Yep, you guessed it, now that needs to be you. Yeah, so you should always have kind of what if stuck in the back of your mind. Uh, this will basically make you a better diver and will make you an amazing rescue diver. Your skill management will get better over time as your bubble expands and you encounter actual first-hand problems and you'll actually know how to sort it and fix it uh, before it becomes an incident. And that's it. Some nice simple tips that will hopefully give you an insight or the confidence to become a rescue diver. Now Mark did a video about rescue diving a while back, so why not check that out? It's just popped up on the screen. And that's it, another episode of the deep dive done and dusted. What tips do you have for someone who's looked to get into rescue diving? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and happy diving. <laughs> Alright Alana, we've actually got work to do. Okay, fine. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. Okay. Oh, sorry, you went for me. Yes. <laughs> Rupert, this is your bit. You will need to be confident to step in and get. It was all kinds of well. <laughs> was it though? Was it? Look at the camera, Rupert. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut. Now, split fins sound amazing. Less effort but more propulsion in the water. Why isn't every scuba diver wearing these? Well, if you own or see a split fin at a dive centre, you will no doubt see Nature's Wings logo stamped on it. 
that's because they develop the technology and lease it out to brands that use it. That's probably one of the main reasons 